Hello, I'm Josh Lemon, and welcome to Alaska Filmmakers, a series dedicated to exploring the many talented individuals in the Alaska film community. In today's episode, we return to the workshop of AK Grip and Lighting to speak with local grip and electrician David Ochoa. Having grown up in a family of filmmakers, David has had the opportunity to work in many film markets throughout the U.S. in both film and television. Today, David is a well-known face at AK Grip and Lighting, as well as other productions in the state. Alaska Filmmakers host Stephanie Wanchala had a chance to sit down with David in the workshop and talk about his road to Alaska. Hi David, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How did you get your start in production? Well, I kind of grew up in the industry. Um, my, uh, both my parents were, uh, were involved in the industry, so from an early age I, I kind of, uh, you know, gravitated towards that. Kind of grew up on the lot back lot at uh, NBC and Burbank and uh, the, the uh, Warner Brothers Studio, TBS, Burbank Studios. So kind of be bopping back and forth between those two places as a kid growing up was pretty cool. Yeah. So you're not from Alaska originally? I am not. I moved up here about uh, 22 years ago and um, decided to uh, go to school. I uh, went to APU. That's where I met Mr. Greg Kern. And as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> what drew you to take part in the grip and lighting part of production? You know, early on, um, probably when I was in high school, I started working as a, a set production assistant. And um, the, the department that I really admired the most, or the two departments that I admired the most, were Grip and Electric. And uh, the few feature films that I got to work on, um, you know, I kind of gravitated towards those guys. Um, there was a, a, an older uh, grip had been in the industry for a long time, a key grip. Tom Ramsey owned his own company on one of the features I worked on and uh, just kind of saddled up to him and kind of, you know, picked his brain. And I kind of knew that that's something that, it, that I could probably do and, and, and probably excel at it and enjoy it. Can you explain what kind of jobs you usually take on in a production? Locally, uh, it's a lot differently from uh, the features I had worked back back in uh, Los Angeles, but uh, mainly um, short length uh, commercials. Um, so you you kind of cross the line between grip and electric, whereas in a full featured film, those departments are separate. So being able to actually work both departments and occasionally dabble into the art department, you know, you kind of have to be a jack of all trades. And so it's, uh, it's been unique and it's been exciting in that sense, working up here in Alaska, of all places, uh, you know, to do that. And, um, you know, I kind of fell into it by accident up here just by meeting Greg. I, I certainly didn't expect to get back into the business. Um, you know, I went back to school and majoring in travel and hospitality management, but you know, it, uh, the opportunity presented itself and uh, being able to work across disciplines was really neat. I realize now that that's very unique when you look back and see the structures of a large feature film and how every department is, is kind of separate. You know, they work together, but they're exclusive of each other. So it, it takes a little bit of adjustment to go back to that mentality versus, you know, working locally where you're kind of trying to cover the point spread. So what exactly did your schooling consist of and did you attend any training programs? Basically on the job training. Um, I think if I'd done like my little sister and went to film school, I'm, I might be maybe in the DGA like she is now. But now at this point, uh, uh, you know, I kind of gravitated toward GRIP and there really isn't a school for GRIPs and, ele and electric per se unless you want to join the union and, and go through a training program. I've kind of had to learn on the job. Um, you know, uh, working with Greg Kern uh, has been great. Um, He's one of those people that uh, if you stick around him, you really pick up a lot and you learn a lot. Um, and um, you just never really get to a point uh, where you stop learning. It's always a continual process. So what kind of projects did you start out with um, in the beginning of your career? Well, in the beginning of my career, I was fortunate enough to work on, on feature films, full-length feature films, um, and uh, go from probably a one of the larger budget films that I've ever worked on to a small independent film to rapidly see both ends of the spectrum, you know. So it, uh, that's where I, I got my start. Um, worked on the um, lot at NBC as a page for about a year and a half or two years and uh, got to uh, work uh, a lot with uh, um, uh, NBC Today Show, NBC Sports, that kind of thing, you know, where basically you're um, you know, a production, glorified production assistant. You know, and being able to go out and experience that was, was a lot of fun and, and get to see the different sides of, of, of television and live TV production. But right about that time, the, um, the Writers Guild went on strike and, and so all the work dried up. 
and uh, that was about the time I decided it was it was time to go back to school. At that, at that time, uh, my dad was living up here in Alaska, and uh, he said, you know, you should come on up, I, you know, see what it's like, check it out. And uh, I came up here, fell in love with it. I mean, as soon as I landed, I knew this was a place for me, and uh, I haven't looked back since. You know, I wasn't really looking for a production job up here, but, you know, through through Greg, uh, we met at APU, and and uh, he started his own business. Uh, came full circle. I came back into town from working in the oil fields, and he just basically said, you know, I, I know you have a background in it. You know what a C-stand is. You know, let, let, let's, let's get to work. So it was neat. Can you kind of describe the kinds of projects that you work on today and what goes into it? Sure. Um, right now, mainly, I'm the shop manager at AK Grip and Lighting, so I'm pretty much tied to the grip shop, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, 9 to 5, and then the odd hours in between. It's mainly administrative duty um, and consulting with people over the phone as to what their needs are and, and getting them what they need within their budget. Uh, I am uh, available and have uh, worked uh, for the local commercial shoots. Um, yeah, I still have a lot of my uh, clients from back in the day. Um, so the local commercial shoots I'll mainly uh, key grip or dolly grip on. Uh, and uh, typically uh, Greg will gaff, you know, run the electric side. Um, but we do a bit of everything, which is nice. You know, we do everything from the grip to the electric. Um, you know, and being able to work on uh, some of the higher budget commercials that come through is, uh, is uh, actually pretty rewarding and takes us to a lot of neat places that we wouldn't normally see. And um, it's, it's really, uh, you know, perfecting your art in that world is one thing, you know, but it's also an eye-opening experience to go to something like Wales or a large feature production and, and get to see how a true department works on a large scale. Sure. So do you prefer working on independent or union-based projects? You know, I don't think it, it makes a difference to me personally. <clears throat> I, I, I look at it all as work and experience. And, uh, you know, uh, I know the union shows that I've worked on, um, you know, have always treated me well. And so there is a difference. And you kind of have the expectation uh, of a union shoot versus a non-union shoot, you know, what you might be getting yourself into as far as long hours and, and maybe pay. But uh, in the end, it's all experience and it's all work, and it's about the attitude that you bring to the set and how well you work with others. I can't, can't stress that enough, you know. What kinds of projects would you like to work on in the future? I think uh, if I stay here in the grip shop, I'd like to see lots of features come through and keep me busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, as for working on, on set, um, I got to say I really enjoy the short form commercials. You know, I've, that's my bread and butter. Uh, gives me a chance to do a lot of different things. Um, working on larger features would be great. Realistically, my position is more back here at the shop as an administrative uh, person here. But uh, I have the knowledge and, and skills to be able to help people out when they're sourcing and, and scouting and that kind of thing. So the experience that I've gained over the years really plays a big part in, in being shop manager here at AK Grip and Lighting and, and basically trying to help people out when they're coming from out of state they're usually looking for, you know, trying to get an idea of the lay of the land, who's uh, who's available, you know, who, uh, what what locations, what weather's like, you know, you, you get all kinds of questions. So being able to work with people and and uh, and kind of feel those questions and help them out is is uh, you know a big advantage for me. With the progression of today's technology, what changes, if any, have you seen in television production and film distribution? Well, I'd say from. My, uh, my vantage point, probably the biggest change is the transition from film to high definition uh, video. So you, you know, we've gone from uh, shooting almost exclusively a uh, 16 or 35 millimeter film, now everything's digital. So it's a, it's a time saver on one hand. Uh, the benefits maybe from the gaffer and lighting standpoint is that uh, you don't quite tweak maybe as much as uh, the lighting as you do, as you did back in the day. Um, but now, um, you know, the, the technology exists that anybody can go fairly inexpensively, gain the technology in the camera, shoot your piece, and if you want to, distribute it yourself now. I mean, go right to Netflix, you know, get it on Netflix or, um, you know, you don't have to be, you know, part of a major studio system or structure to, you know, get your work out there. And it's really exciting time right now in Alaska. I mean, there's a whole core group of filmmakers out there that are, you know, everyone's doing their thing and developing their projects on their own budgets or they're, they're getting their funding, they're piecing it together. 
And that's the kind of thing I think that's where the juice is. I think that's that's really where uh, where to me um, most of the uh, uh, the neater things that you see in film mm -hmm. uh, or in production will come out. So would you say that there has been an increase in local filmmaking? I would say so, definitely. Um, over the past 20 years, um, you know, the number of people that are they're interested and involved and out there and putting projects out has is, is increased exponentially. Since you've lived and worked in L.A. and you've seen how film productions are done there and you've seen how film productions are done in Alaska, what is Alaska's next step? What do we need to do? I think... Uh, foremost and primarily what needs to happen is um, a sense of certainty with our film incentive program. As you know, it's, uh, set, it's uh, set to expire in 2013. Uh, it's critical that, uh, that uh, an incentive be put in place um, that gives some longevity and uh, some assurances to the outside production companies to come and invest in Alaska. Um, you know, working in L.A., the infrastructure, everything's down there already. You know, um, my uh, mom and sister are both uh, assistant directors, and they base themselves out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, and the state of New Mexico in the last uh, 20 years just went through what we're going through right now. Mm -hmm. uh, very similar. Um, they're both, uh, you know, fairly rural states, um, although Alaska is a lot larger. Um, but what you saw happen in New Mexico was, uh, um, you know, the initial growing pains of getting, getting through the film incentive initially, going from a tight insular community where everyone is worried, you know, how is this going to affect my, you know, my, my future? Um, I, I would say overall the impact has been very positive. When you look at our community up here in Alaska, um, so many of us have been used to, you know, working amongst a small group of people. Um, and there's understandable anxiety in the film community about what this project may mean overall. But when you look at the overall project and what it means as, uh, to the state of Alaska, you're talking about uh, uh, jobs for a great many people who aren't working today. And I think that that's, that just cannot be overstated. The, um, so first and foremost, I would say, let's get some certainty on the, on the uh, uh, film uh, incentive. And then once that certainty exists, um, you know, I think the infrastructure can, can follow, can be built. I know uh, personally of three different native corporations up here who have sent fact-finding uh, missions out to states like New Mexico and Louisiana. Uh, they've asked their chief financial officers to research feasibility. Um, you could take a studio like Albuquerque Studios in New Mexico where they built a, a lot of sound stages um, in one property and it's self-contained. They have an art department, grip, everything you need right on the lot. Um, you know, those are the kinds of models that, uh, that uh, investors are probably looking at to see if they can do something similar up here. It may not be on as large a scale, but that is going to be the kind of infrastructure that we're going to need built along with a, a, a uh, broad uh, local base of trained professionals and crew to be able to accommodate, accommodate that. So, you know, you're basically looking at infrastructure and training of uh, personnel, which would be probably the two uh, biggest key factors after the approval of the, uh, uh, and the extension of the film incentive. Do you have any advice for Alaskan filmmakers? Well, speaking as a grip, um, I'd probably say if you're really interested and you're passionate about uh, the craft, um, go to film school. Pursue it. Um, you know, Working grip and electrician uh, is, is, is something that more of like a trade that you'd want to probably learn through the union. If you're really interested in that, like I was, um, then you definitely want to find out about it. Look, go to your local source, your local union, um, your local grip house, inquire. Uh, you know, uh, it's always good to know about people that are interested in that kind of thing. And Alaska has a very small crew base, as you know, and uh, hopefully we can uh, broaden that a bit and get more people in so that we are able to accommodate some of the larger uh, projects that come up. That's all the time we have for today's episode of Alaska Filmmakers. For more information about David and AK Grip and Lighting, please visit our website at alaskafilmmakers.com. We'd like to thank AK Grip and Lighting and David for all of their hospitality, as well as our sponsors and supporters for making this season of Alaska Filmmakers possible. Join us next week as we visit with local production designer and film supporter, Karen Casanovas. And remember, everyone has a story to tell.
Yeah, yeah, yeah.